So guys, we want to say sorry and we sincerely apologize to you. That, that was a very serious network situation that we were faced with yeah. and we had no other alternative, but uh, at least we've been able to sort out exactly what the situation is. Uh, we've, we've been able to resolve it, so to put it. So sorry for the inconvenience yeah. and we, we are back now. So um, like I said, we are in a very serious and exclusive conversation with an 80 year old man. He's an elder in Lofa County who tells us a little about his understanding of the uh, 2023 October 10 elections in Liberia. Too many people, of course, are worried how this election is going to be like and what the result is going to be like. And from his own uh, experiences so far now, as an elderly person, as somebody who's been following politics in Liberia, he examines the election, the October 10 election in Liberia and tells us exactly what he thinks the result of the October 10 elections for Liberia will be. So we'd like to say that welcome to our camera. This is Today Liberia TV. My name is Julius Howard. I'm Pastor Alexander S. Banquando. Okay. Okay. Um, like I said earlier on, thank you very much for accepting uh, this interview, for granting us this interview. And we are as well privileged having you, an experienced old man in Lofa County, speaking to the average population of the world today. So quickly, um, we don't want to uh, ha take most of your time. Can we understand a bit about what you see coming forth in this election, October 10? Well, personally, mm. um, as I've been interacting with grassroots and both um, also the politicians, we believe that our national elections will be peaceful. Okay. Uh, based on the fact that um, Liberia, having gone through the 15 years of civil war, mm. uh, we believe that it will not be chaotic this time. Okay. So, um, like you said, Liberia has gone through 15 years of civil crisis, and so a lot has been experienced so far in the war, uh, during the wars, in fact, World War One, Two, and Three. And so, too many people are still thinking. And there have always been elections violence. Um, you said this election is going to be very peaceful. Okay, now, can we talk a bit about the political parties that are involved with this election? Do you see any of them having any form of tension to come? Well, um, as far as I'm concerned, I think especially with the involvement of the international community and the messages being preached mm. to political party leaders, mm. we believe that uh, they will be politically mature and mm. uh, our elections will not be chaotic. There are two political parties that are actually, I'm sorry to say, very desperate if not desperate, but very prepared to handle the Liberian people's power. So you have the Unity Party that once served for 12 years as Rudy, uh, you know, part of this country, and you have uh, the ruling establishment right now, the CDC, that is staring the affairs of uh, the leadership of the country, uh, the country rather. So uh, of the two political parties, do you really care to tell us uh, which party you think is of weight as it stands now? Well, um, uh, with the messages being received, both internationally and also on the social media, I believe that the Unity Party has a very great weight okay. when it comes to our national elections. Are you giving that response because you are a United Party? Now you're speaking. Not because, uh, as I said previously, I've been interacting with grassroots people as well as some politicians. Mm. There, where I came down with my analysis, okay. I believe that United Party has a weight nationwide. Okay. So the required uh, percentage of the political party, especially for the presidency, to win is 50% plus one. Yeah. There are different different political parties that are contesting the presidency, uh, individuals from different political parties contesting the presidency. Are you actually very certain that a party is going to win round one? I'm very certain because with the... Um multiplication of political parties i'm asking if you are sure one party is going to win the first round to get the amount of 50 percent plus one considering the proliferation and the number of political parties that are there i'm very sure mm. unity party will take the lead 
you are sure United Party will win round one? Yeah. I'm What's sure. the reliance? How can somebody trust that as an analyst? Well, uh, um, one, with the interaction with the grassroots, mm. as well as some um, mature politicians, not only that, mm. but also on the part of the international community. Mm. I believe that um, Unity Party. So, from your analysis and from what you've just said, the Unity Party seems to have both national and international supports that will qualify them to win round one, the first round in, yeah. in this election. Yeah. Because okay. people, and what, what, someone mm. said long ago, mm. that where the sun shines, there where you can hand your coat. Okay. All right. Mm. And so the international community mm. knows fully well that the the the, the unity party has, um, you know, the, the the upper hand in the sense that the experience in government, mm -hmm. all right, mm. uh, will be one of the factors that will lead them to victory for the first round. Yeah. Okay. So, in an event where the Unity Party doesn't succeed in the first round, do you see any violence coming up as a result of that? Possibly because when you have a high exception, I mean expectation rather, when you have high expectation and your expectation is not met at the end of every um, co competition, you feel cheated. Are you foreseeing that as well? Well, uh, firstly, from my religious background, we have been interceding hmm. that let there be no violence in this country prior to or post violent elections okay yeah so, so we have been interceding on behalf of liberia mm. so that our national elections will be peaceful and we believe that god is not in the interest of broad share in this country anymore and we believe that everything with the prayers we have done and continue to do, mm. we believe that things will be peaceful and let there be no fear. So I'm sorry to ask you this question. Yeah. Why do you think um, the United Party is actually proceeding to the presidency uh, after election or in this election? Number one is the standard bearer has served in several positions of government and not only that, being vice president for 12 years, he has uh, a good amount of experience that he will be able to govern this country in the right direction. Okay. Yeah. So that would just be one factor. Yeah. That's the, one experience, of the, the experience of the standard barrier of the United Party has uh, leadership experience. Yeah. Leadership experience. And why do you think the Liberian people will want to change the ruling establishment, this government? Well, um, you know, when a farmer produces good, seed, good fruits, mm. you know that people will be eager to buy them. Mm -hmm. But when there are no good uh, fruits mm. produced, mm. Um, it left with the consumers. That's the parable. I, 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 if you were to ask me whether I understood that very well, I should be telling you no, because I just asked, why should the Liberian people change the George Weah led administration? And you said when a farmer produces good proceeds from his farm, mm -hmm. then farmers are prepared to buy. Yeah. But if he doesn't do, then it means that the, the decision is in the hands of the farmers. Yeah. I don't understand. Well, uh, what I mean, um, the longevity of any government depends on the goods you deliver. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is Today Liberia TV. My name is Julius Howard, and we are here in a very serious conversation with an 80-year-old experienced old man from Lofa County who um, makes some analysis about the October 10 elections in Liberia, and we are still here. And so, uh, that um, can you tell us a bit about... Um, uh, we want you to be a bit explicit when you say uh, when the farmer produces a good fruit or good proceeds from his farm. Can you categorically say what are those proceeds that the farmers or uh, the buyers would have expected the farmer to produce in any way? Well, I don't know about the other parts of the country, mm. but specifically, if I should make my analysis on Lofa County, mm. if you take a trip, like from from Zozo, as someone rightly put it, 
from Zozo to Vonjama, it may take you about 12 hours to reach Vonjama City. Mm -hmm. And that is a bit of suffering. Okay. Yeah. So road connectivity? Road connectivity is one of the factors. But you know. I, I'm now reducing this uh, analysis to an extent of the understanding of the layman. I believe you're talking about a good road network. Mm -hmm. But you are also aware that this government is already working on the road and as a stance, people from uh, Monrovia only have challenges now from Salahe to Vonjema. What can you say about that? Well, um, we are happy for that. Mm. But there is more to be done. Okay. A lot needs to be done. Yeah. Okay. So that let's speak a bit about Lofa County senatorial um, uh, race now. You have three Loma uh, candidates because they've been qualified by the National Elections Commission. Now you have Momo Saros, you have um, um, Zago, Senator Zago, who's the city senator of the county. Um, you also have uh, Honorable Kalapa Wozi Kotime, who's also a Loma candidate. And you have um, Moses Colley, who's a Peleme. So can you have, can you make a little analysis on uh, the successes of those four individuals with, with, with three from one travel background? Well, um, you know, the success of any man depends on how you affiliate yourself okay. with the grassroots. And also mm. your past history. Okay. Yeah. Your activities that you have been involved can convince the people mm. um, to do a wise selection. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the travel background for which they come doesn't matter at what? It does not matter. Okay. So uh, uh, that in those days, that was the case. Mm. Uh, because in those days, when when, when politicians, when the grassroots was not, you know, knowledgeable in, enough when it comes to national elections, sometimes the, 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 their selection of leader depended on nepotism, mm. you know, and so forth. But that's not the case this time. People look closely at what you can deliver. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we've had you um, talking to us a bit, and we want to say thank you very much. Though uh, we actually will be coming to you for some more analysis until the end of the elections, but too many people are worried um, about the elections result, and too many people say that it might end in conflict. I'd like to repeat this again and hear what you have to say about that. Uh, we we categorically reject that because. We have been on our knees, churches, meeting together to pray against violence. And so believing, uh, believing in our God, definitely Liberia will not at this time again experience any brochure because of power. Okay. Yeah. So um, nobody wants to run away from his home again the second time. For the second time? Mm. Not at all. Okay. So um, let me understand uh, understand a little about, um, you You said that you are a pastor, and that's a very interesting one. It's good that we're interacting with a refined man of God who also understands politics. Mm -hmm. And too many people have it that the true politicians are the men of God, are the pastors. Um, is it in any way harmful for a pastor to be a politician? But except people who don't know the history, but politics originated from the church. How? Oh. oh yeah. So um, we don't see it anything negative if I'm a pastor to participate in politics. Mm. Even in the very home, politics has been preached between husband and wife and children. So what makes it harmful? Politics sometimes, is... sometimes people believe that when they are they are inescapable political you know engagements that uh, many people believe uh, sometimes it becomes brutal it becomes very conflicting and men of god are not supposed to be involved into those kind of things and too many people go about doing all kind of things that are not accepted that are not bible standard and so involving yourself into that will disqualify you as a man of god you don't think so well uh, i don't i don't think so okay because um individuals vary okay so I've been as a pastor, mm. definitely, and knowing the role I have been playing okay. 
you know, in the community. Okay. Uh, if I'm in politics, mm. I don't think that will have anything to do with the church. Okay. Because, as I said previously, mm. politics originated in the church and even in the home. And I believe that um, something would have happened if you were a pastor in a church and you started contesting to be a representative. Con considering the fact that not all of your church members will want to carry you, uh, you know, as representative, you don't also believe that that would create some differences between you and your church members? Well, um, that cannot be ruled out. Okay. Every individual has his choice. Okay. But based on how I have been handling the church, mm. it, there will be a percentage that will reject me, not much. Okay. So yeah. that still comes from your goodwill? Yeah. Okay. That we actually appreciate talking with you this afternoon, and it's a very interesting one. I'm sure people who are following a lot of comments come in from uh, Peter Gadu, from Daniel Haima. I'm not able to call all of you. I'm seeing all of your comments from Lasana uh, Kone, um, uh, from Lai Labai. Yes, thank you very much, Joe Smith, uh, Peter. All of you want to say thank you very much for following. And uh, I'm seeing all of your comments here, but I can't read all now because of time. And we want to say thank you for following us. And we want to conclude this exclusive interview with uh, our Omer, who has made an analysis, an exclusive analysis about the pending elections in Liberia and even some relationship between uh, church members, or men of God, and politics. So thank you very much, Dad. What's your final message to your people? Well, my final message to the people is that uh, how far will violence carry us? It will only throw us backward. And so my advice is that every Liberian by now should understand that um, violence produces nothing good for mankind on the destruction okay and so who will want to take the path of destruction so categorically i i will say that no nobody will want to take that path especially so having gone through this civil crisis um, except for those that were not born during that time mm. But uh, we know what we went through. And so I will not support any individual to, re to, to resort to violence because of uh, uh, elections. Thank you so much. Yeah. A lot of people seeing you, would you want to call your number so that anybody wanting to have some more um, information from you, maybe some consultation, so that they reach you by your telephone? Okay. My numbers are. 077-55-140-61 and 0881-9170-86. So if someone please. is watching and listening to uh, the, the, the numbers, I mean, and, and getting the numbers, please try to dial it on the screen there and just send it for the benefit of those who are. So that, please read it one more. Again, my numbers are 77 one four zero six one okay and zero eight eight one nine one seventy eighty six thank you what's your name once again i'm pastor alexander s banquando banquando is a kissy name right what does that mean uh as the loma people say says here okay meaning you can go anywhere. Walk about ya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much for speaking to us. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Bankwando is a refined man of God. Of course, he lives in Pongema City. Of course, that was his analysis about the October 10 elections in Liberia. My name is Julius Howard. This is Today Liberia TV. It's been an interesting one. We are still here in Pongema. Hopefully, we come to him anytime the need arises. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you for interacting with me. Thank you, sir.